And good morning, everybody. Maybe we should, what I'm not sure about is whether like my microphone volume level is all right. But uh, so give us feedback somewhere on one of these chats. But let's start with an introduction. So my name is Harvard Bast. I'm super excited that I will teach data visualization here with Johan. We will talk about data visualization and Matplotlib, two topics I really like to talk about. I work in Norway, in Tromso. I do research software engineering and I help, I like to help researchers with improving their code. And I like to teach Python and different things. And with me is Johan. Yeah, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Johan Helsvik. I work at the PDC Center for High Performance Computing in uh, Stockholm. Uh, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in and teaching here from, from Uppsala. And I realized so... that I should take the screen and arrange it. Let me do that. Oh, just a sec. He, no, that's not right. Almost double range. And while I open the sharing window, I will close my physical window. All yes. Right. Good. Good. We will talk about data visualization. Uh, and let me first tell you how the best way to participate. So what to expect? It's good if you have your Jupyter lab open. And I understand you have that already if you were following the pandas episode, but if you joined later, it's a good moment to open up your Jupyter lab. We will be using it. So we will be doing data visualization inside Jupyter. And we will also explain why that is such a good fit. And we also, you can open up this episode, data visualization with Matplotlib, which is also linked in our collaborative notes. And Johan and me, we will look at these notes. So that's a good, a good place to ask us questions. And in a different window on my screen, I have them open and we will try to react to questions live. So please keep the questions coming. We plan to do a bit of introduction for the first 15 minutes. We will then do an exercise block. So you will get 20 minutes to, to try this on your own. We will then do a break. And after the break, we will do a something. We will talk about how to make plots even prettier. And then we will have another exercise block. And now the question is, should you, should you, as we, or as we show you how this works in the notebook, you can, you can either try that with us. So if I add something to the notebook, you can do it as well. If that is cognitively a bit too much to listen and also go into a different window and type something, it's also totally fine to just watch what we do and you will have enough time in the exercise box to, to try it yourself. Exactly. Good. So let's first motivate why we do this and why we chose Matplotlib and why we do that in a no Jupyter notebook. Let me just arrange the windows here on my side so that I can see your questions. And let me also zoom in here a bit. Data visualization with Matplotlib. So our goal is not becoming experts and knowing everything that can be done with Matplotlib, but we want to give you a really good overview of how to find help, how how do we use it, and what is what are good starting points, and how does it connect to the previous episodes like pandas. So that's our goal. In total, we will spend one and a half hours on this topic. So not only being able to start, we also want to show you how how do you how can you tweak, how can you improve plots without remembering all the options and the commands because we don't remember them either. The application uh, interface of Matplotlib is um, is really big. And uh, it's also so that 
So, so Radovan is not Logleaf the only Python packet for visualization, or are there more? No. There are, so there are many. Mm -hmm. Here are the ones that we know that we know. So there are probably even more. I have tested most of them, and I use them in different contexts. So there is Matplotlib. This is the one that we will show you. There is also, and it is the it is probably the most popular one. But there is Seaborn, which builds on top of Matplotlib. There is Vega Altair, Plotly, ggplot, and then there are different libraries for more special use cases. I would consider the top four here or the top five really general. So there are many libraries and also Python is not the only language that can do plotting. So why do why do we do Matplotlib? So I would say one, one uh, very, very good thing with, with uh, Matplotlib is just that, uh, I mean, as Python is a completely free ecosystem, it is uh, transferable. So if you write the plotting scripts in Matplotlib, you can share them with your colleagues and uh, also with the community at large. This can be then a little bit in contrast with, with some commercial packages for plotting mm -hmm. where you might have a lock-in effect that you prepare your scripting and then you share it and, and others cannot, perhaps they can read the, the script file, but, but they cannot make use of it because they do not have the program. Yeah. And it may even be the same person or you in a different job in future. And uh, so the fact that it is free, that both Python is free and open source and that Matplotlib is free and open source is really important. And it's really report important for reusability and reproducibility. And I I like to, so when, when I talk about doc, uh, data visualization, I like to start with this quote, which I took from this fantastic book by Klaus Wilke, Fundamentals of Data Visualization, which you can browse. It is The book is online. And it's this, this quote here that one thing I have learned over the years is that automation is our friend. I think figures should be auto-generated as part of a data analysis pipeline, and they should come out of the pipeline ready to be sent to the printer with, and here I paraphrase, with minimal post-processing needed. And this is because when we generate plots for posters or publications or theses, at least in my experience, I never do it only once. I do it at least twice. I do it once, and then I do it again one day before the deadline. Yes. Because something changed, I want to modify the color, or I get new data, or I realize that there was a tiny mistake, and I need to change the figure. And if this is not automated, it's hard. Often you uh, might need different uh, versions of your figures. So yeah. the, the, the precise size and, and shape of a figure that you have in a manuscript might be different from what you then need to go on a poster or on slides for presentation. Yes. Then if you have that in script form, you can then tune to the appropriate format yeah. and then reuse your, your work. Yeah. Or new data comes in and you want to update the figure. And we will see that. If we use tools like Matplotlib in combination with tools like Jupyter Notebook, this becomes a really nice combination. So we will uh, we will now focus on Matplotlib, but you can browse, of course, all the the other ones as well. At the end of the session, we might uh, also have a look at uh, one of the other libraries. So why did we start with Matplotlib? We motivate it a little bit. It's also, so it is the most popular library. It is, if you come from MATLAB, it will feel familiar because it, it takes a lot of inspiration from how plotting is in MATLAB. Even if you choose to not use Matplotlib, maybe you prefer Seaborn. Um, many of these libraries build on top of Matplotlib. And then if you want to tweak it, improve it, it helps to have an understanding of Matplotlib to be able to improve your plots. But it is relatively low level, low level in terms of uh, we can really modify everything. 
so in terms of abstraction, um, it doesn't provide statistical functions. Some of the some of the other libraries do. But the advantage of Matplotlib is that you can adjust everything. You can really make things publication ready. Everything can be configured and modified. And speaking of statistics, uh, which is then not contained in Matplotlib, I mean, you can naturally combine the Matplotlib scripting that you do with other Python, Python packages, such as NumPy, SciPy, and then mostly Pandas that, that we have been talking about earlier. And I'm having just a quick look on the questions. Thanks for coming, bring, uh, raising them. For instance, question nine, when should, when should I use X and when should I use PLT? This is something that confused me a lot when uh, learning and using Matplotlib, and we will comment on that. So we will clarify that. This is something I realized maybe 10 years into using it, that there were these different interfaces. So we will comment on it. Also, another really good question is, how is Matplotlib built on top, built using, uh, so how does it connect to Pandas? And also this is something we will discuss. Some of the plotting libraries interface with Pandas in a more nice way or less, but also with Matplotlib, it is possible to, to use Pandas data frames. We will come back to that. But I think we are ready to open up the notebook and start creating our first plot. At this moment, you can either do it as well if you have enough screen space and enough cognitive management, but you can also watch what we do. You will have, in, you will have the chance to test it out in the exercise block. I will open up a new notebook. So let's start with a new notebook. Let's not continue from one from before. I will open up a new one and also good first reflex is to rename it. I don't want to have my notebooks untitled, untitled one, untitled two. I want to give it a good name. I will rename it. Right click, rename notebook. Let's call it plotting. And back to the material. I will copy paste the code here from, from this block. I will run it in a notebook, but let's also explain then what is happening. But let me copy. So I copy the whole block. Let's see whether this works at all. Here you are so, in the Python for SciComp uh, Python environment, I guess. Yes. Or Anaconda environment. Yes, yes, indeed. That also so at this moment, all we import is a library called Matplotlib which is part of the Python for SciComp. It is also part of an Anaconda-based environment. So if you get here an error that Matplotlib not found, then you are probably in a different environment. And I ran this code. I got a first plot, which shows some dots. I have an x-axis, I have an y-axis, and a title. They are not very concrete yet. And now let's inspect the corresponding code. What did, what did we do? We imported the functionality. I, Im, I defined two lists of numbers, x values, y values. And these values, take they are part of the so-called ANSCOMS quartet, which is a really important data set because it is used to motivate why we even do data visualization because it's it's four data sets which really look very different when we plot them. But when you look at the statistical values, like the mean, the sample variance, the correlation, the regression, uh, the statistical values are the same. So if I didn't plot these, if I would only look at the numbers and the table, I would maybe have less insight. But back to back to the example, what else can we discuss here? This is the important part, these two lines. We, we set up a figure and we set up 
axes. These are objects which we then can use to, for instance, do a scatter plot. And here I sent the data x into, I said, these are the x values, these are the y values, and I define a color, which in a really weird format here, but I will later comment on why we do this. Instead, I could also use a named color. I could say red. And if I run that, then the dots will be red. And this is self-descriptive here. Just having a look at the questions. Is the question sir, about how, how one can import it using uh, just import matplotlib instead of matplotlib.pyplot. So why I do this here? Because there is more in matplotlib than the pyplot. Pyplot is one of the interfaces that Matplotlib provides. I could also import Matplotlib. And then here, here I would have matplotlib.pyplot.plt. I could do that as well, and it will it would also work. It wouldn't be on any noticeable penalty, maybe a little bit more typing. I chose this way because this is often what people do. And this is often what you find when you look for examples on, on the internet, or if you, uh, you ask one of these AI chat solutions. Oh, just looking at the other. Oh, so question 15, is it better to use this way of doing it rather than the PLT? We will comment on that. So we will come to this. We, we recommend to do it this way. So we show you the more robust way, and but we need to then also explain why this is possibly more robust. I think we will do that after the exercise. Exactly. So perhaps we have, um, if there are, I, I think we are actually ready to go into the first exercise. So should we perhaps ex uh, present it? Yes. So now you have all the tools ready to do the first exercise block. Your goal, I mean, here it says 15 minutes, but we really want to give you 20 until five minutes past the hour, but I need to explain also clearly. Your goal will be to, to do what, what we did here with Johan. Open a notebook, copy the block, get it to run. But once you get the image that we, we got here, you are asked to extend it. You should add a second data set. And then yet another data set, which is this one multiplied by two. And here we wanted to show you also that this is a way to multiply all numbers. This is one of the many ways in Python to multiply a list by, by a factor. Then you will get a plot that looks like this. And another, another thing that you can try to do is Browse the documentation, find out. So you can have a look at the quick start guide and try to find out how can you get a lab label, uh, sorry, a legend into the plot that we can then link to, to the data values. And at the end, it should look like this. You can also experiment changing, modifying the colors. And if you get stuck, there is a solution here. So if I would open this up, whoop, but I will do it only very quickly because we don't want to have a spoiler. But you find a solution for this exercise. And then we can come back five minutes after the hour. And after that, we will uh, we will send you into a, into a break. And if you are curious about why did we choose these particular colors, here is an explanation. Do we have everything we need for the exercise block? So your goal is this exercise number matplotlib1. And I will add instructions into the document. And we will be back five minutes after the hour. All right, good luck and see you in a bit. Bye. Bye. And welcome back from the break. We will continue with Matplotlib.
I wanted to also show you the result of the exercise session. So hopefully you get the result that looks like this. You also find this um, in the solution. So here we have plotted three sets of X and Y values with different colors. I want to save the notebook. I just wanted to remind a really good practice that that I find very useful is that before I save a notebook and before I share a notebook with other people, I like to run all cells from top to bottom. Uh, I would, if the notebook is not too long, I would recommend to do the restart this, kernel. Yeah, this is even better because this will reset and run everything from top to bottom because this is exactly what the next person will do because the next person opening the notebook will not have anything in memory. It will, they will run the notebook from top to bottom. And I want to make sure that it still produces the results that I wanted. This will prevent me from having to run the notebook in a very particular order that nobody will remember. And now I can save. Super. And before I hand over to Johan, and before we talk about now, how can we improve a plot? How can we customize it? I wanted to comment on the question that we got a couple of times, which is which of the two possible ways that one can use Matplotlib should we use and why? And I admit, sorry, I need to zoom in here. I admit that although I was using Matplotlib for quite a while, it wasn't clear to me that they were actually two different interfaces. And I got really confused because Every time I was asking the internet for how do I do something in Matplotlib, I saw an answer, but it always looked different than what I remembered. And I was doubting myself for a long while until I've, I learned that there are actually two ways to run Matplotlib. One way is the so-called object-oriented way, or also called the explicit interface. And in this explicit interface, we create these objects, and then we use them. This is the method that we use in this lesson. This is also the method that we recommend. There is another method, which is the so-called PyPlot way of doing things, or the so-called implicit interface, which looks shorter. So it's, there is less to type. I don't have to create the figure object. I don't have to create the axis object. I can do this directly. So it looks easier. The downside is that now that we start customizing, so if I now change the, the line width and the format and colors and settings, I will affect the settings for all my plots that come later in the notebook or in my Python code. And sometimes this is not what you want. So this will be more practical if you once you start putting this into a function. Because then when you change settings, you change settings only for the for the function that you want and for the plots that you want it instead of changing it implicitly for everything. So that's why we recommend this way. But we show you both ways because so that again, you know, if you then search Stack Overflow, or you ask ChatGPT for how do I do something with Matplotlib, you might get, you might see this kind of an answer. And then you know why this is different than what we have just learned. Here's also an explanation why, why we even spent now a couple of minutes emphasizing this. And with this, I, uh, Johan will now take over and guide us through styling and customizing plots. And we we continue watching the collaborative notes and please continue asking questions. We really appreciate. Yes, uh, thank you, Renan. So uh, we will now touch upon the topic of styling and customization plots. And uh, a starting notion here is this, that uh, this is also an aspect of uh, reproducibility. Because I, I used myself uh, earlier in the days to often do plots with, uh, yeah, often plots with uh, 
with MATLAB. And uh, I would then get a certain certain feel and look of the figures and uh, perhaps there's something which needed to be uh, tuned a little bit and I might then do it in a drawing program. That's fine if you do it once uh, or twice, but if you need to do it for, for 10 figures, it's lot as a lot of extra work. So Matplotlib and other libraries, they allow to customize almost every aspect of a plot. And it can be good to know what are the different Matplotlib parts of a figure so that we know what we can search for when to customize things. So we open up this. And uh, this is here for, for a two-dimensional figure. So you can see here that in the object-oriented um, um, modality, we have all of these um, uh, variables. So you have the axis set minor locator. You have a major tick label. You have the markers that you can change. And you have a legend. And one thing that can be very convenient, uh, which you can show later in, in the notebook, is that in order to see what are the different um, properties that are available, you can use the help command. Yes, and it's also nice to know how is this even called? Like if I want to web search for something, this I really like this figure because then I know that I need to search for something called Minotic or Legend. On the same uh, web page, you also have an extensive listing on what are these properties in web format. So, um, from from this paragraph here, we also have a, a resource here, which is this is to a GitHub repository with Matplotlib sheet sheets. So this is something that you can explore uh, later. Uh, there is also a number of predefined style sheets that you can activate with the use command. So we can show some of these. So these are uh, with, with different uh, di di different uh, collections of colors and uh, and uh, marker styles and line styles that you then can choose from. And uh, these are designed so that they have a good uh, uh, good collection of colors, which is something that is very important because it is not uncommon that a reader or a viewer of your figures uh, might have a, a limited capability to that, that you can be colorblind, red, green, colorblind, or other um, vision impairments. And then it's good to have a, a color palette that works also when you are working with them um, in, in a gray, in gray scale, so that you have lighter, uh, you have that the color range ranges from, from lighter up until till darker. Yeah, one like during my PhD, one recommendation was always to print print your plot in black and white on a printer to see how it looks. Then, if somebody later prints the paper on a black and white printer, then later I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense anymore because I think nobody is reading papers anymore in paper. People read it on in a computer. But now again, I know that it does make sense because it can help us identify any sort of color problems for color vision deficiencies. Yes. Yeah. So we will uh, now have a hands on uh, example of uh, exercises and, and styling and uh, I will do it as a, as a demo. Uh, you will also have time to do uh, it during the exercise uh, session. So uh, what we'll do here is that we will uh, import a data set from, from uh, using pandas. So the exercise is this one, customization one, log scale in Matplotlib. And I will now switch over to do it in the, in the notebook. 
So I start with copying this text snippet here. And please remind me because I was now also distracting answering something. Should we now all or do the same thing as you or should we watch? You, 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 you can watch. Okay. Yeah. So this is now uh, imported a, a data set. This is about um, statistics of uh, countries. It's uh, the Gapminder data set. And uh, we will then use a plot command. That I Before paste. we go into the plot, it's we can maybe reconnect to the previous lesson about pandas. Mm -hmm. So what people see here is that we load a CSV file from the internet, mm -hmm. but then there is this read CSV command, which we have seen in the previous episode. And at the same time, there is dot query. So we we filter out and we are only interested in the data for the year 2007. And here we have uh, four different countries. We have the life expectancy and we are interested in GDP, the gross domestic product. So roughly uh, how wealthy the country is. Good. So I now take this, um, this snippet here and I paste it in here and execute it. And what we'll get here is that what, what we choose to work with here is the life expect, uh, we, we, we will um, visualize uh, life expectancy um, as a function of the GDP per, per capita in terms of uh, purchasing um, parity. What's the PPP? What's that, Radon? <laughs> That's purchasing parity. Yeah, so it's some like inflation adjusted US dollars that are also adjusted to have a more fair comparison. So it's not US dollars, but for our purposes, we can think of like inflation adjusted US dollars. Yes. And uh, what we note here is that the data is here um, distributed so that it's seen here. A lot of it is along the, uh, the vertical along the vertical line here and a vertical and, and then around this horizontal uh, line here horizontal region here in, in uppermost in the plot so the question is here so how can we make better use of the visualization to to uh, to highlight uh, the data here so do you have any suggestion or the one what what could be yeah, so one, one step that we can do is we can try a, a logarithmic axis, which will then, because we have such a big difference in orders of magnitude on the x-axis. So by switching to from a linear to a log axis, we will, it will, we will probably see the trend hopefully yeah. clearer. Exactly. So we need then to, to set the axis scale to uh, a logarithmic one. And uh, this we will do by by uh, setting this um, this attribute to set x scale. We set it to log. Take that line, and I go to the notebook. And add it here. Set x dot set scale underscore x scale log. Yes, and, and now we have then the logarithmic scale on the x-axis here. And uh, yeah, what, what we have here is uh, much more um, much more evenly distributed within, within the, the canvas. There's also here um, one attribute, the alpha attribute that we can play around with here. So the alpha attribute uh, is at first here, it's uh, a half. You can see what happens if we change it to 0 0.8. Yeah, then you can see that this affects the the, um, um, the transparency of points. So by using this uh, higher value, we have a more 
uh, dense uh, visualization of, of, of the plots. Great, and a question to both of us. So do do you remember all these things? Like how to set a log axis, how to what how to do the trans how to set the transparency like i admit that i don't so i almost never remember this i always have to look it up yes uh, that's a good point and uh, one can then um so we have here if you see here what what, what are the objects that they created we have created the handle fig and we have created the handle x and uh, the logarithmic scale is something that we set by working with the x object and uh, let's see what what attributes do we have here for this object so we can type help and x and uh, then we can see that we have a very lengthy listing here's first a general description of what the, the object is um, what, what class it is and then you can see that we have all, all of these listings. And among these listings here, we will have then the, the logarithmic scale. Tell the, the opportunity to set the logarithmic scale. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Hmm. Good. Um, we will now have, we will, um, now, now soon let you go into the exercise session where you will uh, play around with um, with customization of, of figures and uh, uh, yeah should we perhaps introduce the exercises here it's uh, working with the uh, same data sets your, your task is that you will uh, make the ticks marks and the access label fonts larger and uh, you need a, you, you can search on the web for, for what are these uh, attributes that you need to work with and uh, the um, the target that you're aiming for is to arrive to a figure which is looking like this so this is one of the exercises that you can do and uh, the second exercise that you could oh you should hide the solution there um, the third exercise that you can work with here is uh, that you can adopt a, a gallery example. And here we have some some links to some of the other resources that uh, are yeah, like Seaborn, which is based on, on Matloplib. And then there's also Vega Alt Air, uh, which is a standalone um, Python packet for visualization. And, yeah, and uh, here, oh, this so people will choose exercise two or three, mm -hmm. and and the exercise three is really close to at least how how I work in real life. So in in real life, I don't remember all of these commands. I often look through the gallery examples for something that looks similar to what I have in mind. And here, you will try to first. I often take the example and I try to run it on my computer. And then once I get it to work, then I try to change the data. And then I try to put in my data. And then I tweak. So that can that can be a really fun exploration, which is at least close to how I work. I don't know about you, Juan, but I, I can't remember on almost anything. I always start from something that already works, that yeah. somebody else created. That's, that's, uh, that's also how I, I do it. So, so uh looking at at uh, these uh, galleries is a very good source of inspiration and that's also where you then get exposed to what are the different uh, uh, functions and attributes that you, you can work with so is there anything that we can bring up from the hack md for now i'm looking I think... So most questions are answered and they are relatively detailed. One bigger picture question was whether we will talk about interactive plots. So plots where you can, you don't get just an image, but you get something that you can interact with, like with a slider. And I believe that we will not do it in this course, but I will, I will link to a lesson 
where this is demonstrated. But I think we are almost ready for exercise session. It will be customization two or three. Until what time? Like when we will be back? We will uh, take 20 minutes for this exercise. All right, so we'll be back to 55 past, and then we will summarize. We will connect this a bit with Panda's data frames and then hand over to the next episode. So exercise customization two or three, starting now. See you again in 20 minutes. Bye. Bye. All right, we are back. Five more minutes of Matplotlib. So we want to wrap up the session and then we will go into a break and then we will go into something else. And we thought that in the five minutes we could try to do this exploration together on an example. And I also realized now during the exercise session that the solution that we have listed here doesn't match anymore perfectly the gallery of Seaborn because they changed their examples. Anyway, let's try this together. I will now take Seaborn, which is something that builds on top of Matplotlib. And I will I will take that for a specific reason that I will come back to before the hour is over. So this is often how I start. I open up one of these libraries. I go to the gallery and I look for an example that looks close to what I have in mind. And here I will... I will take, I will try to be somehow close to the exercise. I will, I want to do a violin plot, which is a way to show distribution of points or, and a statistical spread. And so this is something, I want to have something like this here. This is what it looks and there is an example code and the way I start often is I take what they have and I try to run it on my computer first. Let's try that. Seaborn is, is a library that it that should be in your environment. It is in the Python for Sarcomp. It is also a part of Anaconda base environment. And now I'm crossing fingers and running the cell. And I get a plot that looks like what they have. So that's already a big success story. I don't fully understand what's going on here, but my next step often is to, I want to get an insight into the data because I want to replace it by, with my own data. And here I have a feeling that, so load example tips data set. This is some data set about some bird. No, it's, some, it's about some smoking and not smoking. But what I do, because I don't know this data set, I would often, I would actually split, split this cell into two. And here I would print, I can do either this, or if I'm in a notebook, I can do this directly tips. I want to see how it looks. Let's run all cells. And this turns out to be, uh, we already recognize this. This is a pandas data frame with columns and rows. And I think this data set shows the different tipping behavior of smokers and non-smokers. And now I also maybe understand that what this library is able to do is that we load the data set and then we can map X values to a certain column and we can map the Y values to a different column and we can map the color to a yet different column. And now I would go in and instead of using this data set, I would try to put in my own pandas data frame and I would try to plot that. And only then I would start tweaking and adjusting and customizing. And here I wanted to show you that Seaborn is a library that is able to really use Pandas data frames directly and map 
columns to visual channels, X, Y, color. Can we do the same thing in Matplotlib? And back to our lesson. And I learned very recently that you can do almost the same thing in Matplotlib. So instead of what we what we were doing, that we were sending a slice, a column of data into defined as X or as Y, we can use this instead. I can say the data is a data frame. And then I can map X values to particular column, Y values to a different column. So that's very nice. If you then try to do a bit more, like if you try to co map color to continent, then it becomes a little bit harder. And these are, so there are, we wanted you to know that there are libraries in Python that make this easier. And this is also for those of you who come from R and ggplot2, you can do the same things in Python with li in libraries like Seaborn, Altair, Vega, but I see now that we are out of time. We will continue answering the questions. So please keep please keep asking questions about plotting, about Matplotlib, and we will continue answering, but I don't want to eat into the future sessions. So thanks from my side. You, uh, Johan, any concluding words here? Um, well, I think you, you covered it all. And I said, we will continue to answer questions on the HackMD. More details there, I will answer there. Thanks so much everybody for listening. Thanks to Johan for co-teaching and looking forward to the next sessions. And I think now we go into a break, into a 10 minute break, if I understand correctly. Yeah, break to mm -hmm. uh, 11 past the hour. Yep. Bye.